Ever wonder how testosterone levels might affect your body? This powerful hormone is a hot topic these days, with phrases like low T and testosterone therapy becoming part of our everyday vernacular. But did you know, a surprising number of men undergoing testosterone therapy haven't even had their levels initially tested? That's right, studies estimate that up to 25% of males receiving testosterone therapy never even got an initial testosterone test to see where their levels stood. It makes you wonder, how can you know if you have low testosterone without the right tests? Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of testosterone, its effects on the body and what it means to have low levels. We'll also discuss why and when testosterone therapy might be initiated. So let's dive deeper into the world of testosterone and its role in our bodies. So where exactly is testosterone produced in our bodies? Great question. In males, testosterone is primarily produced in these fascinating structures known as the testes. Within the testes, we find unique string-like structures called seminiferous tubules. But here's the twist. These tubules are not responsible for testosterone production. They actually produce sperm. Nestled between these tubules, however, are clusters of cells known as the interstitial cells of Leydig, or simply Leydig cells. These cells, which make up about 20% of the testes' overall mass, are the real MVPs when it comes to testosterone production. But not all testosterone is produced in the testes. A small portion of androgens, which are hormones that have masculinizing effects, are produced in the adrenal cortex, the outer portion of the adrenal gland. This is true for both males and females. However, the amount of androgens produced here is significantly less than what's produced in the testes. In males, the androgens secreted by the adrenal cortex account for less than 5% of the masculinizing effects. In females, the androgens contribute to the development of pubic and axillary hair, which is just a fancy way of saying armpit hair, but they don't cause major masculine characteristics. So while testosterone is produced in both the testes and the adrenal cortex, the majority of it is produced in the testes in males. In females, testosterone production is much lower, with the adrenal cortex being the main source. This is a complex process, but understanding it can help us appreciate the intricate ways in which our bodies work to maintain balance and promote healthy growth and development. So, the majority of testosterone is produced in the testes in males and in much smaller amounts in the adrenal cortex in both sexes. With this knowledge, we can better understand how and why testosterone levels might fluctuate and what that means for our overall health. Now that we know where testosterone is produced, what constitutes normal levels of this hormone in our bodies? The normal range for testosterone levels varies widely, and it's essential to have this context when considering whether your levels may be low. For males, the range can span from 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. This is a broad spectrum, and it's important to note that there may be some variations depending on the lab that conducts the test. Now, you might be wondering about the testosterone levels in females. Well, they are significantly lower compared to males, typically falling between 15 to 70 nanograms per deciliter. And while testosterone is often associated with masculine characteristics, it also plays a role in the female body, contributing to the development of pubic and armpit hair during puberty, among other functions. So what's considered low testosterone in males? The American Urological Association, or AUA, provides a guideline for this. According to them, anything below 300 nanograms per deciliter can be considered low testosterone. But remember, this is just a guideline. The human body is complex and a number on a test result doesn't tell the whole story. While these numbers provide a benchmark, it's crucial to understand that individual experiences can vary greatly. Some people might have testosterone levels on the lower end of the normal range and feel fine while others may experience symptoms typically associated with low testosterone. Similarly, having a level below 300 nanograms per deciliter doesn't automatically mean you have a problem. It's just one piece of the puzzle. In conclusion, interpreting testosterone levels isn't just about numbers. It's about understanding the individual and how they feel on a day-to-day -day basis. It's about recognizing that these levels can fluctuate and that a one-size-fits-all approach isn't always the best route. So normal levels of testosterone vary greatly, and anything below 300 nanograms per deciliter in males can be considered low. Remember, it's not just about the numbers. It's about how those numbers translate into your everyday life. But is a number below 300 nanograms per deciliter enough to diagnose low testosterone? 
That's the question we're addressing today. You see, diagnosing low testosterone or low T, as it's often referred to, is not as straightforward as simply looking at a single number. It involves a more comprehensive evaluation. First, it's crucial to understand that testosterone levels can fluctuate throughout the day. They are typically highest in the morning and gradually decline as the day progresses. So the timing of the testosterone test can significantly influence the result. Secondly, symptoms are a significant part of the diagnosis. Low testosterone is not just about having a number below 300 nanograms per deciliter. It's about how you feel. Are you experiencing fatigue, a decreased sense of vitality, or a dip in your sex drive? Have you noticed changes in your body, like increased body fat or reduced muscle mass? If you're experiencing these symptoms and your testosterone levels are on the lower end of the normal range, then you may be diagnosed with low testosterone. It's a combination of the numbers and the symptoms that provides a more accurate diagnosis. And let's not forget about the importance of ruling out other potential causes for these symptoms. Conditions like depression, sleep apnea and medication side effects can mimic the symptoms of low testosterone. A thorough medical evaluation is essential to ensure that these other conditions are not the real culprits. Furthermore, having a low testosterone level alone, without any symptoms, may not warrant treatment. This is why it's so important to have a detailed discussion with your healthcare provider about your symptoms, lifestyle and overall health. Finally, it's also important to consider that testosterone levels naturally decrease with age. So what's considered a normal level for a 20-year-old may not be the same for a 70-year-old. So, diagnosing low testosterone isn't just about the numbers. There's a lot more to the story. In the end, it's about understanding your body, knowing the symptoms to look out for, and having open, honest conversations with your healthcare provider. So, we've learned quite a bit about testosterone today, haven't we? We've delved into the fascinating world of hormonal production, discovering that testosterone is produced in the testes, with the interstitial cells playing a key role. We've learned that androgens, testosterone being the primary one, are also produced in smaller quantities in other parts of the body, including the adrenal cortex. We've also explored what constitutes normal testosterone levels in both males and females. For males, it ranges broadly from 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter, while for females, it's significantly lower, between 15 to 70 nanograms per deciliter. And most importantly, we've discussed the complexities surrounding the diagnosis of low testosterone. It's not just about the numbers, there are additional criteria that need to be met. And so we see understanding testosterone is about much more than simple numbers. It's about understanding our bodies and the complex roles hormones play in our health. If you are enjoying our content, please give us a like and subscribe.